My first two loves, chapter 77, old acquaintance be forgotten. New Year's Eve parties are all about leaving behind old mistakes and taking only good things into the coming year. And in Avis, I was determined to do both, which wasn't a terribly hard goal considering how badly her last party had gone. The thought weighed heavily on my mind as I pushed open Ava's front door and stepped in. As I scanned the room, my stomach twisted. Maybe this wasn't a good idea. But what if this party brings back mad memories and makes things awkward between me and Ava? Ava. Just the thought of her was enough to make my heart race, and my eyes swept the crowd for her long legs, sweeping hair, beautiful eyes. A hand found my waist, and the very eyes I'd been searching for were suddenly staring right at me. There you are. I was wondering where, uh, when you'd get here. Her eyes raked over my frame from head to toe, and I felt my skin warm. And looking hot, too. I guess that's why they call it fashionably late. You know me. Always ready to make an entrance. Well, consider me entranced. Come on, let's get you a drink. She guided us to the kitchen to take my hand so she didn't lose me in the crowd, but when we emerged, she didn't let go. There's Jungle Juice Champs and my signature virgin mocktail, the Avanti. What's your poison? Avanti. Jungle Juice, which what the hell is that? Glass of Champagne. Eh, Avanti. Coming right up. She grabbed a glass and watched over her shoulder as she poured together a few juices before handing me the concoction. What's in the Avanti, anyway? Normally it's a secret, but between me and you, it's sparkling grape juice and grenadine. Bottoms up. What the hell is grenadine? We tapped our club drinks together, and as she put the rim to her mouth, Lucy called her from the living room. Lawrence, are we playing or what? Crap, I forgot about the game. Ava grabbed my hand and dragged me in the living room, where all the art kids had set up beer pong with champagne. New rolls. Emma's here, so we're playing doubles. Lucy, you can play with Iris. Uh, where is she, anyway? Before she could do more than look around, a voice called out from the upstairs bathroom. Uh, Ava, where's your plunger? <sighs> it's not really nice to come to someone else's house and poop. Oh no, I'll be right back. So, just... Don't have too much fun without me, okay? As Ava slipped out of my grasp, Lucy rolled her eyes and called the next group up to play while I casually scanned the party. I found Mason hanging out and dancing with some guys from the football team. As I made my way to him, the song ended and the next one on the playlist came in slowly. Mind if I cut in? I know Homecoming was months ago, but it's way too soon for that joke. Still, he nodded to his friends, and one by one they disappeared, leaving us alone. Mason opened his arms, and I melted, melted into him, dancing along to the song. You look happier than I've seen you in weeks. What's your secret? Nothing but good old-fashioned modern medicine. The doctor says my dad's out of the woods. He's supposed to take some time off from school to recover, and they have him on a buttload of medication, but he's gonna be okay. That's great, but what about you? Mason took a shaky breath, and I could feel his heart pick up speed in his chest. I'm gonna be great, too. It's just uh, far away from my parents. When I graduate Eastridge in the spring, I'm leaving it all behind. All of it, except you. My voice stirred something deep in my stomach, and I pulled back, my eyes flicking to his lips. Mason swallowed hard, and his hand slipped a little further down my back, his fingers grazing the base of my spine. Mason... He leaned in closer, and just in time for the music to pick up to change as the beat picked up. More and more people stood up to dance, and I remembered we were in a room full of people. We'd better not. We're giving everyone a show. And let's uh, find somewhere we can be alone, just the two of us. I met his eyes, and for a moment I imagined being alone with him, picking up right where we left off. I'm... I'm right behind you. I followed Mason to the bathroom on the second floor before slipping inside and locking the door behind me. When I turned around, he grabbed me by the hips and backed me against the door. How's this for privacy? He dipped my hand, his head to mine, pressing his lips to my neck, my jaw. 
I let my hands wander across his chest as he carved a clear path to my lips, but just before he kissed me, he paused, lowering his voice to a whisper. It's just us, right here, right now. In that case, let me give you something to think about. I pulled him into a kiss, working my lips against his before licking gently at his bottom lip. He opened his mouth to me, and I swallowed his moan before slipping my tongue in, deepening the kiss. Mmm. Teasingly, I massaged his tongue with my own, and I felt his stomach clinch against me as his hands caressed my backside. Out in the hallway, a drunken voice knocked and called out to us. Hello? Anyone in there? The doorknob rattled as he tried to open the door, and Mason and I broke the kiss, each hoping the log held. My heart raced, and I thought, fast, raising my voice to a high-pitched squeak. Someone's in here! Oh, sorry! Heavy footsteps trotted down to the bathroom at the end of the hall, and then nothing but the muffled sounds of the stereo downstairs. I exploded in giggles, and Mason nuzzled my neck before resting his forehead against mine with a smile. As he stared lovingly into my eyes, my laughter died down, and all at once I became intensely aware of the feel of our bodies pressed together. Mason's voice became a husky whisper. How long do you think we have until someone else comes knocking? Not long, but who cares? I say we make him wait. I crashed Mason's face and my hands were dragging them down his chest, his abs. I want to take time with you. Hmm, that is music to my ears. I brought my lips to his, and he matched my pace, slow and steady, while his hands snaked up my torso, massaging my curves. I arched my back, pressing my chest against him as I fought, fought to control my ragged breaths. His biceps bulged as he gripped the backs of my thighs, using the door's leverage to lift me off of my feet. Oh. And I locked my arms around his neck as he carried me over to the sink counter. Blood raced through my veins, warming me from the inside out. Mason... I've got you, Emma. Just relax. He slipped his leg between my thighs, and I moved against him, letting the pressure build and build. Mm. The fingers grabbed at his neck, his shoulders, his back, and he claimed my mouth as his own in response. And deep in my stomach, I felt a warmth rise up as every part of me throbbed from one, and I bucked against him with everything I had. Mm. Keep quiet. I buried my face in Mason's shoulders, desperate not to let anyone on the other side of the door know what was going on. Mm. My brain locked itself into an instant state of bliss, and I vaguely aware of Mason staying calm, soothing words in my ear. It took everything in me not to cry out, and instead, when the wave finally crested over me, I rode it, rising and falling over and over again. Every muscle in my body tensed and then relaxed, and my breaths came in fits and starts. As I came down, I felt drained and limped. I leaned against Mason for support as he placed a gentle kiss on my lips. You are so beautiful. You snuck off with Mason on New Year's Eve. I pressed my lips to his again and again until my strike came back. That was amazing. But we better get back before someone else notices we're missing. Mm, why don't you go first? I'll follow behind you so we don't look suspicious. Good plan. I'll see you down there. I pushed the skirt of my dress back down and shook out my hair before peering into the hallway and heading back downstairs. As I weaved through the bodies, a voice called out, beckoning me over to the couch. When I finally made it, I realized it was Ava, armed with her cell phone. Pose for Picta. Together, we got tons of pics laughing the entire time, and as Ava posted the shots to her story, I flopped down and relaxed into her side. This is how things should have gone at your last party. Just us hanging out, no drama like we used to. Instead, I almost ruined everything and you were so far gone, I barely got to see you. I had to be that drunk just to be comfortable around Mason. Oof, wow. Talk about uncomfortable. And when I saw how into you he was, well, it kind of snowballed from there. Ava slipped her arm around me and pulled me closer, resting her temple against the top of my head. But that's how I know this is right, because I don't need a drink to show you how I feel. And she was right. Being in her arms felt as natural as breathing. As we lay cuddled together, her fingers stroked my side. My body reached or reacted to her touch. Ew, Ava, somebody just parked on your lawn. I said, Noah, you gotta be kidding me. She withdrew, forcing herself up, and started towards the door. As she hurried away, she called out over her shoulder. 
I'll be right back. And I'll be right here. As the door closed behind her, I scanned the party and noticed Noah standing alone in the kitchen. As I walked up, Noah stared. Noah's cup is mine, clearly a million miles away. You know, you would think that your quote-unquote love interest would actually seek you out in a party, but apparently they just hang out in really odd places of the house. Hey, stranger. What are you doing in here by yourself? He met my gaze with a lazy smile, gesture for me to join him. As I did, I poured myself another drink. I guess it uh, still doesn't feel like uh, I belong here. It helps that uh, Jennings and I are cool and the rumors have died down some, but I certainly think I'd be better off sticking to the friends I've got and trying again in the fall when I'm on campus. If I'm on campus. He quickly cleared his throat and brought his walls back up, but I knew that tone of voice. I gave a shoulder a nudge with mine. New Year's Eve is all about new beginnings. If you want one, all you have to do is claim it. Hmm, that sounds good and all, but trust me, it's easier said than done. I glanced over the counter and saw the pins and paper that had been left out for resolutions. An idea sprang to mind. I'll tell you what. I grabbed a seat, a pin, and slip of paper, and slid Noah's across the counter to him. You write down what you want out of this year, and I'll help you get it. But you gotta dig deep. I capped my pen and thought for a second before I wrote to be more decisive. Noah ran over my shoulder and gave a small nod. Well, if we're talking deep, then how about this? He scrolled for a moment, then held up a slip that read, Forgive myself. Hmm, I think that's perfect. I'll help you with yours, and you can help me with mine. But, as I reached for the paper in his hands, his skin rushed against mine, leaving my hands smoldering everywhere he touched. I let my eyes travel up his hand to his chest, his throat, his lips parted, opening in want, and I couldn't help but imagine them on mine. Noah let out a slow breath like he could read me my every thought. You know, there's one good thing about keeping a low profile. No one would miss us if we disappeared for an hour or so. But of course! Time flies when you're having fun. And I know just the place. What, the bathroom again? <laughs> I took Noah's hand and led him to a home office just off the kitchen. We slipped inside, and as he locked the door, I strode across the room and sat perched, legs crossed on the edge of the desk. When he turned, he drew in a sharp breath, his eyes hungry with desire. Wow. Wow, don't tell me the cat's got your tongue. Hey, you wanted to get me alone. Hmm, consider your wish granted. My wish? You're saying I was the only one wishing for this? Not even close. Still, I smirked and leaned further back against the desk, silently as Noah stalked towards me. With every step he took, the anticipation grew higher and higher, and my stomach clenched deliciously. Do you really think the innocent girl you met behind the school all those months ago would dream this up? Hmm, there's nothing innocent about you, admit it. You want me as badly as I want you. I uncrossed and recrossed my legs, squirming as the pressure between them rose and doubled down on itself. He hadn't even touched me yet, but the look in his eyes practically set me on fire. And what makes you think that? Come on, Em, I know you. And if I'm right, you couldn't help thinking about coming in here and locking the door. As he reached me, his eyes raked over my frame, and my skin burnt hot, melting me from the inside out. I held my breath as he dropped to his knees in front of me. Getting me into a compromising position. In a surge of confidence, I uncrossed my legs, and Noah's breath hitched. His eyes flicked beneath my dress, and I imagined what he might do. Instead, his fingers toyed with the skin of my ankles, slowly creeping higher. His eyes never wavering from mine, I threw my head back and groaned in desperation. I have no idea what you're talking about. You're a terrible liar. He gave my ankles a tug, and pulling me closer to the warmth of his mouth as every inch of me throbbed with one. As he pressed his lips to my ankle, kissing, licking, nipping at the skin there as I bit back the moan that was threatening to tear through me. Noah, please. Noah stood up, clutching the backs of my thighs to his chest, and lowered my torso to the surface of the desk. Tell me what you want. The skirt of my dress fell to my hips, exposing me from the waist down, and his fingers mapped a course to the apex of my thighs. 
muttering my thoughts. I want you louder. Oh god, no, I want you. My thighs slipped from his chest and fell open, gripping his sides as he folded over me, gripping his, or bringing his lips a breath away from mine. Then kiss me. With hesitation, I claimed his mouth with my own, our tongues wagging, a war that left us both breathless for waging. He ground against me, and the feel of his body was all that needed, I needed to know that he wanted me to. Mm. I love it when you take charge. You're being all dominant is sexy. He pulled back to look at me, and I watched as his demeanor shifted, his eyes darkened, and deep within my stomach, my muscles clenched. Good, because I want you on that desk and out of those clothes. His rough tone, paired with the intimacy of the request, caught me off guard, and I froze. But then he brought his lips to my ear and nipped at my earlobe. No. He backed off, clearly expecting me to follow his orders, and as I sat up to slip my dress past my thighs, I couldn't help the rush of excitement that went straight between my legs. Well, are you gonna just stand there? Are you gonna follow my lead? I thought I was the one calling the shots. You are, but when it comes to you, I get a little impatient. I slid my hands beneath the shirt, reveling in the feeling of his hard chest and abs against my fingertips. Mmm. Noah grabbed him and pulled the shirt up over his head while I set to work on the belt and zipper. As, I set, as he stepped out of his jeans, he took my chin between his fingers, filled my hand back, and kissed me hard on the mouth before demanding. Tell me what you want, Emma. I want you to pull my hair like this. Noah cut my face in his hands and his fingertips massaged the nape of my neck and my scalp before slowly curling it into a fist. Yes, I gasped as Noah gently pulled my head back and brought his mouth to mine, slipping his tongue through my parted lips. He explored my mouth before pulling my head back further and traveling down my jaw, my neck, my chest. My breath caught in my throat, and my hands slipped lower to provide the attention I'd been craving. Outside a door, a voice call out to everyone in the kitchen. Hey guys, Ava wants everyone in the living room for an announcement. Hmm, so much for an hour, but I had fun. Maybe we can pick up this in the new year. Maybe, but right now, we'd better get back out there before someone notices we're the uh, ones missing. Hmm. We got dressed and snuck back into the kitchen. Noah made a beeline for the table. No more hiding out in here. Come on. I took his hand and followed the crowd to the living room to find Ava sitting on, standing on the coffee table. Mason spotted us in the crowd and came over. The countdown's gonna start soon, but before it does, I wanted to bring in the new year the right way. So if you don't mind, she lifted her cup to the ceiling and all around us others did the same. Cheers to the lessons learned, mistakes made, battles fought this year, and here's to all the new ones yet to come. Cheers! I tapped cups with Mason and Noah, and as we drank, I couldn't wait to see what the new year had in store. Ava fought her way through the crowd, tapping her cup against everyone she passed until she reached my side. Hey guys, I've been running around her so much, I've barely seen you all night. What did I miss? Mm, aside from one hell of a party, not too much. Ah, uh, well, there is one thing. My dad will be home soon, and with any luck, he'll be back to school in a few weeks. That's what we want to talk about, Mason, your dad. Mason, that's amazing. And best wishes on a... wishes on a speedy recovery. Yeah, that's just fantastic. What the hell is that supposed to mean, man? He almost died. You know... I thought after the dinner at the cabin, you were finally starting to get it. Your dad is not a good guy. How do you think he ended up with a mansion of yours? Look, he and I might have our differences, but my dad works really... Bullshit! The only thing your dad works is the system and the proof is in the safe of his. Take that back. Make me. Oh, for the love of God. It's like insanity. As Einstein said, things that you expect to change and continue going in a circle will never change and it is the insanity. Guys, but it is already too late. 
Mason lunged at Noah, knocking him into a vase that hit the floor and shattered. And all around us, people screamed and jumped back to avoid the glass, the flying fists. Noah drew back to punch Mason in the face, but the blow never connected. Ava wrenched the two apart, face furious. That's enough. This isn't a back alley. This is my house. And if you do want to act like animals, you can do it out in the cold. Get out. Fine by me. Noah stalked out of the open front door and into the cold. Can you believe that guy? I wasn't just talking to him. Leave. Now. But, hey, buddy, you literally swung first. Mason, was that really necessary? You don't always have to ri rise to the bait. For a moment, Mason didn't look like he would leave. But then he stuffed his hands in his pockets with a stony expression and took his exit. I can't believe this is happening again. Forget him. Come upstairs with me. I have a surprise for you. Hmm. I've heard of this surprise. We headed outside to the balcony on the second floor where people were mingling and chatting. Hey, I'm sorry. Things got a little out of hand there, and I know how you feel about Mason and Noah, but I... What are you apologizing for? You've been running around like crazy, making sure everyone's having a good time. Meanwhile, those two couldn't put aside their differences for one night, because as always, the drama's more important than everyone else. I'm just tired of the fighting, of feeling like I'm missing a piece of myself when I'm the, with the one of them and not the other. And mostly I'm tired of not being honest with myself. The countdown began, and I yelled to be heard as everyone around us started cheering. Tan! Nine, eight. I saw you kiss Bela and I felt super overwhelmed because deep down I, I wish it was me instead. Emma. But I never had feelings for a girl before, so I pretended what I'm feeling is just friendship. But Ava, I'm in love with you and I'm just sorry it took me so long to finally admit it. Mm, you talk a good game, but now that you've said it, what are you going to do about it? Eyes flashed to her lips, and I was warm all over at just the thought of kissing her. As I leaned in, a lute lang scene played loud and clear through the speakers, and the crowd around us counted down the start of a new beginning. Never heard of it before. Three! Two! Wow, she spoke really fast for those six seconds. As the clock, clock struck midnight, I nervously pressed my lips to Ava's, melting into her warm embrace. She took my face in both hands, licking and nipping at my lip until I deepened the kiss, exploring her mouth for the furry first time. I pulled back, breathless, and the snow fell down around us. I said the only thing that my frazzled brain could bring to mind. Happy New Year. Ah, oh, yes. So, let's go ahead and say, first of all, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Please do that. It helps. By liking the video, it helps against the algorithm, also lets me know that you enjoyed the video, and lets everyone else know you enjoyed the video as well. And also by sharing the video or channel is a great way of getting this out to, whether it be friends, family, strangers on the internet. It's a great way of them coming and seeing if they want to enjoy this channel and this content as well. I put a lot of personality and whatnot into this, and um, yeah, this is for supposed to be the collective, not just me. And uh, also, subscribe. It's a way of receiving notifications also to, uh, well, be notified of content when it goes up. Now, let me go ahead and get to this. So, I have seen the oof of the Choices fandom once again. And congratulations. You guys impress the crap out of me at how much you hate one another. It's really depressing. It's it's you actually make me lose faith in humanity. So a lot of I, I'm gonna go ahead and say this as I said this in the Facebook group for choices, and everyone quickly shut up about what's going on. Okay, are you all ready? All right, let's go. So I've seen such posts as you know basically if you have an issue with Ava being forced and not an issue with Noah or Mason that you are insert phobia. And I disagree with that. I disagree with that entirely. And this is why I want, and this is part of the reason why I have the community that I have. And I don't know, I for personally feel like making a video in and of itself to a separate issue in case, you know, people are like, what? Here's what I'm going to have to say is, um, first of all, 
no love interest should be forced. That's been my issue since day one of a lot of these apps and a lot of these stories with choices. And as choices has aged more and more and more, they've taken the choices out of choices. Um, so basically, it shouldn't be forced regardless of gender. And all genders should be open to be picked. And if anything, there should be more inclusion and less exclusivity in this app. But, you know, again, that's something that I've been pushing for a long while since the foundation of this channel, um, not just for this game. And then if you basically have an issue with that, you're going to have even more of an issue with what I'm about to say. The Choices fandom is one of the most toxic I've ever seen out of all fandoms. Out of even the gaming community, the political community is really right there rivaling it. And especially as a content creator who's literally the only one who actually reads the stories and puts a little bit of input in there, uh, you know, my comments address the core of the issue. No one should be forced. And if anything, this did force Ava. Again, I'm, I'm okay with the fact that you can be a girl with Ava. I'm also okay if you were a guy love interest and you were forced to kiss Noah or Mason. Again, that's me because I'm an open-minded individual. That's just me. Um, again, uh, because the whole core issue of this, it was a choice and there was no choice given. Um, no one should be, if, if there was a choice given versus being pushed, there wouldn't be toxic, there wouldn't be upset, there wouldn't be anything, and there would be nothing to really complain about. This is the same fandom who went cuckoo for cuckoo puffs when Zag issue back in Freshman. The thing is, is again, if you fix the issue, the second wouldn't happen. And I hate to say it, but some people will play these games and try and immerse themselves. So let me put it in this perfect perspective. If you're a female who's straight and you get forced to, you know, you want to immerse yourself. You're playing this game for whatever reason and you got immersed in this book. <laughs> I Hats off to you. Let me know how you did it. But... And you are suddenly, again, you're straight, and you're forced to kiss Ava. That would break immersion. That is someone being forced on you. The same is to be said as a guy having a guy forced on you. Um, you know, they forced something. It's not even a choice at this point. You know, I, I sit here and I see things from all angles, and I see things from open-minded individuals. I see people, you know, if you're straight and want to remain straight. I see people from, you know, uh, all, all sorts of, and, and, and whatnot. Okay, so I can see where this is going to be an issue for anyone. The point is, is people should be saying, hey, allow what happened to choices, allow people to have a choice. Again, I, I've seen the toxicity of choices community and boy, oh boy, you know, here I'm having tons of people who, you know, are sitting here saying, you know, you're trying to derail the focus of posts or trying to derail the issues or all this other garbage. It's literally and figuratively garbage. No, the fact of the matter is, people should have a choice. You have a choice. You literally have a choice. That is literally what this is all about. This is literally what we have been fighting for since I, I literally discovered guys could like guys or girls could like girls or girls could like all or guys vice versa. And the thing is, is you are wanting a choice. You are wanting equality. You are wanting a choice. And if you are going to be, have something forced on people, again, whether they be straight, whether they not be interested in, in Ava at all, but you are forcing something on someone, you are taking the choice away from them. And that is not right. I get it. This is a story and we're playing as an individual. But I can only imagine, you know, playing Detroit Becomes Human and some of the choices that they had in that game were taken away to ruin the story, to ruin your choices that matter, and things like this. Again, your whole choice throughout this book, right, was Diamond Edition, Diamond Choice with Noah, Diamond Choice with Mason. There was no choice with Ava. Think about that. Your choice was taken away. So people saying this derails the focus or all this other crap, you are just as just derpy as anyone else. Like, you are you are literally the same, if not worse, than the other side. That is complaining. Yes, there will be toxic vitriol posted on one side or the other. It's like the, in political terms, the far left or the far right. So, again, I feel like I should do a separate video in and of itself so we can address this. But 
Um, I'll see what you guys have to say in the comment section below if you want me to go a little bit further if you guys just want me to make a specific video addressing this who what when or why let me know um, Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next time. Peace